This next transformation is one that happened in the heart and the mind of a dog who was loved so much by his rescuer. She found him the help he deserved, even when it broke her heart. I would say for a while, it really wasn't evident to me that there was a problem with Lou. He was a typical golden retriever puppy, super cute. Happy birthday, Lou! Here's your treat. It was probably around a year that he started guarding his food, and that's one of the first times he bit me. But I brushed it off. You could tell he knew he'd done something wrong. At one point, my sister's daughter, who was a toddler was just walking by Lou as he was finishing up eating and Lou turned around and he bit her. There was something wrong with him and I ignored that and by ignoring it, I contributed to a lot of his problems. All right, let's just cross. We're just gonna walk past each other, so go to the other side. So my sister heard about Brad through Park City's chatter. Keep walking. She said, he's one of the best dog trainers in the country. He looked like the perfect person to train Lou. Come on. With behavior, we're, we're really looking at the state of mind, so how the dog feels. We really just focus on how balanced they are, how happy they are, how fulfilled they are, how content they are. Come on, buddy. Come on. So when Lou first came in, the biggest challenges we had from like a rehabilitation perspective was taking the time to understand him and what kind of the root cause of all these symptoms, the biting, the guarding, the anxiety, all that stuff. At the core of it was a very, very anxious dog, very nervous dog and aggressive dog. He said that Lou had to stay for a minimum of five weeks because he had bitten someone. I just remember thinking, oh God, this is a boot camp for me emotionally. I was patient, I didn't push him too hard, I didn't ask too much of him. And once we had the trust established, and then I realized what motivated him, I was able to use a ball and fetch and defection from me, kind of as our reward system. Lou made incredible progress through our program, but during the process I realized that this was not a dog that should be in a normal home. So Brad said, here's the deal. I can keep Lou here for a couple more weeks, and then he comes home, and then I come into your home probably more often than most people, and just we do a lot of maintenance work with Lou. Or the other option is Lou doesn't come home, and I take Lou. I was floored. It was something I'd never considered. And my mom said, He's an expert in this field, and he's telling you there's something really, really wrong, and even he can't really fix it. I felt really guilty about it, but I would have been doing Lou a huge disservice. He's a really unique and special dog that doesn't belong in a traditional environment. I felt like he was too big of a risk to go into a normal home. He's what I call behaviorally fragile, and you have to do everything perfectly for him to be balanced and content and happy. I've been that person who's heard about people giving their dogs away and I've been very judgmental of it. Now I know that there are a lot of different reasons that <laughs> dogs don't work out and that dogs deserve to be in their best possible environment. <laughs> when you think about the rescue process, there are so many touch points for human beings to help that dog. And every one of them has to let go of the dog except for the final one, so the dog can have the best life. And Lou's mom was just part of that process so Lou could find us and we could give Lou the best life possible. I always feel connected to him and I always miss him, but I'm also really happy for him. Now he's in the right environment where he can be listened to appropriately. He has the right structure. He has the right independence. I mean, it's Disney World for dogs.